This video is part of the course that is key clock, single sign on with Spring Boot and Spring Security. Link for the course is given in the description. Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will see what is single sign on. In short, it's called as SSO. So let's understand single sign on with real world example. And for that, we will take example of Google. So let's jump to the browser. So this is the mail service provided by the Google that is Gmail. Now let's click on the sign in. Okay. So here it will ask you to provide your Google's account details. Okay. So let me put it very quickly. So now we are logged into the Gmail service, okay, that is provided by Google, okay. Now on the top, you will see different applications, basically different services, right, provided by the Google. It can be YouTube or say for example, Google Drive or anything else like Map or something else, okay, like uh, Photos, okay. So these are the different applications provided by the Google itself. Now, if you try to open one of this application in another tab, say for example, YouTube, okay. Let's open the YouTube. See, on the top, see, I'm already logged in. Okay. I don't need to log in again. If I open Drive, the same thing will happen. I don't need to log in again because the browser, right? That is the same. The session is going on. Once I logged in, okay, with my Google account, I am saying Google account. Okay. I am not saying my Gmail account. I am not saying my YouTube account. Okay. So once I log in with my Google account, with my email and password and if I want to use any of the applications provided by the Google then I'm already logged in. So this is single sign-on. When I talk about single sign-on there are two things that you need to keep in your mind. The very first is all the applications are provided under the one organization. Here it's Google. The second is browser window is same. Why? Because this is ongoing session when I log in. Right. So these two are, you can say, pre-assumptions or the conditions when we talk about the single sign-on. It's not like you log in, right, with your Google account. And if you now open in another tab, say, for example, Facebook, you need to log in again with the Facebook because Facebook is different organization. Google is different. Another one, right? Same like for Twitter. So when we talk about single sign-on, there is only one organization under which you have many applications. And the second is, this tab. If you open another tab, say for example, Google Drive, then it's fine. But what will happen if you open another browser? Say for example, this is Google Chrome, right? Now if you open Mozilla Firefox and in that you will open drive.google.com, then you need to log in again because that's a different browser. Or say for example, your normal Google Chrome, right? And you open incognito. Then the same thing, you need to authenticate yourself because the session is going on in this browser window only. Okay. So these two things you need to keep in mind when I talk about single sign on. So in single sign on user needs to authenticate only once. Okay. And then if the user tries to open other application in other tabs, okay, then user doesn't need to authenticate again and again. See here, I just log in with my Gmail. Okay. I clicked on the Gmail sign in. I provided my Google account details. Now I am accessing YouTube, say for example, in another tab, I'm opening Google Drive or I'm opening blogger.com. I will be already logged in. I don't need to log in again and again. So only once you need to authenticate yourself under the organization. And that's why it's a single sign on because you are authenticating yourself only once. And then you can access all the applications for that particular organization. Here in our example, it is Google. So here Google is providing single sign on. Now for a minute, just assume that Google is not providing single sign on. Now in that case, what will happen if say, for example, if we open Gmail, right? Click on the sign in, we provide our email ID and password. We authenticate, right? And enter into our Gmail inbox. 
now in other tab we open youtube so what we need to do we need to sign in again same for example right in the same manner if i open the third tab enter the google drive url i need to authenticate myself again and same applies for all the applications under the google organization so this is really a pain okay if you think from the user perspective this is very frustrating because again and again user needs to authenticate for accessing all the applications under one organization so this is very bad user experience okay if there is no single sign on and let me tell you one thing i work with the organization where there are 15 to 20 applications okay and still organization is not providing single sign on for the employees and i need to log in again and again for accessing all the applications even my browser window is saying i need to authenticate myself again and again for all the 15 to 20 applications so this is really a pain okay being a developer you also need to think from the users perspective as well then only you can develop better applications okay so nowadays most of the focus right for the big organization you can say is on the better user experience and the single sign on is one of them so this is single sign on with real world example and here we took google now let's jump to our technical example so here we have one organization say for example and it is having five different applications okay there can be n number of applications but here i am taking five different applications and say all of these are spring boot applications okay this course is all about key clock with spring boot and spring security so i'm taking all these applications are developed with spring boot now there is a user okay so user is opening a browser in one tab it hits the url of this application one okay in the same way the user is using this all the applications now there is no single sign on say for example then what user needs to do is user need to authenticate for each of these applications while accessing even if the browser window is same and obviously the organization is one only okay inside which we have this five different applications so this is very bad user experience also if you think from the developer perspective right then each of this application will be having the code for authenticating the user okay whatever details user is providing it can be combination of username and password or email and password each of this application will be having their own code base for authenticating the user and obviously when we are talking about the spring boot right there comes the spring security for the authentication and authorization so this is not good architecture design right each of this application is having the same code base basically to authenticate the user so this is from developer side but if you think from the user side right user need to sign in for each of this applications now here the user can be employee as well okay say for example there is an organization different applications are there there is an employee who is basically user of this all the applications and there is no single sign on and the employee need to sign in in each of these applications this i am explaining you because you need to understand the importance of single sign on before jumping to key clock you first need to understand what is single sign on and that's what we covered in this lecture if you like the video then please subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell like the video do comment in the comment section and share with your friends do you want to learn key clock if yes then i am having complete course on it in this course you will learn what is single sign on and how to implement single sign on using key clock you will learn about key clock in detail starting from installation and how to implement key clock in your spring boot application using spring security you will learn how to implement single sign on by taking example of two applications so what are you waiting for link for the course is given in the description just click on that link and start learning key clock with spring boot and spring security that's all for now we'll see you in the another video till then happy learning and happy coding